Today I'm gonna to talk about my favorite subject, money, cold hard cash, and how to represent it in Python. There are lots of cases where this is useful. For example, if you're processing accounting data, or perhaps you're developing a backend in Python for a web shop and you need to handle orders, or you're a quantitative trader, or you work at a bank and you need to analyze financial transactions and detect irregularities, or you just love capital. Now you might be tempted to use floats to represent legal tender, but that's a really bad idea. And I'm going to show you why. Then I'll show you two ways to do it properly. But before we talk about dough, I'm starting to run out of synonyms here, there are a few things you should know about how Python represents numbers. Let's dive in. The most common types used for representing numbers in Python are floats, integers, and decimals. So the float type represents floating point numbers. And in Python, those are represented by 64 bits, double precision, similar to the double type in C sharp. There's one bit, for the sign, there's 11 bits for the exponents, and then there's 52 bits for the mantissa. Floating point computations are really fast. CPUs often have dedicated floating point processors. So that's one of the advantages of using floats. However, floats are not very precise. I have a very simple example here. I try to add two floats, 1.1 and 2.2. As you can see, when I run this, we don't get exactly 3.3, but we get approximately 3.3. So floats are fast, but it comes at the price of precision. Another very common type for numbers is integers. Now, most programming languages actually have a fixed size integer. It can be 32-bit or 64-bit. Python actually has a variable length array that it uses to represent integer numbers. And that means you can basically store arbitrarily large numbers in Python as long as it fits in the memory of your machine. So as opposed to fixed integer types, you don't have to worry about overflow, but that also comes at a price because the larger those integer numbers become, the slower the computation also becomes. However, for smaller integer numbers, performance is almost as fast as floats. The final number type that's important to know about is the decimal type from the decimal package. And this is also a really useful type if you need high precision computations. So the reason you can do precise computations with this is that it uses a base 10 representation internally, and you can define how precise you want these numbers to be. Obviously, that comes also at the cost of memory use and performance. To show you the difference in performance between these types, I've created a small script. So I have a couple of test numbers here. I have an integer number, I have a large integer number, I also added some NumPy integers to the mix to show you how that works. Then I have a float, I have a large float, and finally I have a decimal number. And then I have a couple of test functions. So this tests various operations on integer numbers. This tests the same operation, but on a larger integer number. Then I'm doing the same for floats and for large floats, for decimals and for NumPy integers. And then I have a main function where I'm basically running these functions each a million times and then checking what the execution time is using the time it package. And so when I run this, here you see the execution times for each of these operations. So for integers, this takes 0.124 seconds. If I use a large integer, you see that the number actually goes up. That's because it needs more space to represent these large integer numbers and that has an effect on performance. Floats is really fast. That's a bit more than half of the time it takes to do that computation with integers. And you see that if you switch to very large floats, that doesn't really make any big difference at all because, well, the floating point representation itself doesn't change. You have the same number of bits. Decimals are by far the slowest because of course they're more precise, so they take more time to compute. In this performance test for NumPy, I'm using int64, which is a fixed size integer, as opposed to Python's variable size integers. And you see that it's actually a bit faster than Python's built-in integers. So now that we've seen this, what type should you use to represent monetary values? Well, you shouldn't use floats, even though they're really fast because they're not very precise. And when you're dealing with money, not being precise is not really good. An alternative approach to using floats is to use decimals to represent monetary amounts. Like I said before, with decimals, you can indicate what your desired precision is. And it's really easy to do this. So I'm going to import from decimal the 
decimal type. But since I also want to indicate the precision, I'm also going to import get context, which allows us to set the precision. So if I simply print decimal 1.1 plus decimal 2.2, let's run this then, this is what we're going to get. So this is still not very precise. But what I can do is I can now set the precision by using the get context function. And let me start by setting a precision of two because apparently this is what GitHub Copilot wants me to do. So then you see we'll get this. So it does rounding so that we end up exactly with 3.3. If you want a higher precision, you can also put a higher number here. Now we're getting precision up to 10 numbers or we can do precision up to 50, for example, and then this is what we're going to get. So depending on what you need, you can set precision as you prefer. But there are also two issues with using decimals for monetary amounts. One is of course that decimal computations are pretty slow compared to floats and even integers. And that means that if you have a system where you need to process a ton of transactions and you really need to think about performance, then using decimals is not suitable to you. Another reason why decimal are potentially problematic is that they are really a Python specific thing. So if you want to store them in, I don't know, a database, for example, then you need to convert them to another format. And that means you might still actually lose precision that you thought you had when you were using decimals. Now, of course, if you're mainly using it for internal computations, you don't care about the performance, then decimals are still a great type, but you should know about these limitations. So in short, this means that the architecture of the system that you're working in is going to influence whether you should use a decimal type or not. By the way, I'm working on a new course that I'm gonna launch this year that teaches you everything about software architecture. If you wanna learn more about that, if you wanna be part of the first group of people to participate in the course, go to rn.codes slash architect to learn more. So like I said, decimals are not ideal if you want highly performant code or if you need to store them in a database where you don't have access to the Python specific decimal type. How do you solve that? Well, one way to solve it is actually use integer values. Computations with integers are relatively fast, not as fast as floats, but still quite fast. And they're also quite memory efficient, provided you're not Scrooge McDuck. Bah, humbug. Next to that, they're also widely supported. Databases, JSON, etc., all support integer values. So how do you then represent a monetary amount like $3.65. Well, what you actually do with integers is that you store the monetary value in the smallest currency unit possible. And in dollars or euros, that's cents. So $3.65 would be stored as the number 365. And this is actually quite common. For example, Stripe, one of the largest payment providers in the world, does this and uses integers everywhere. Here I have a very simple example that shows this. So I start with an balance of 10,000. So that's if we're assuming this is in US dollar, we have a hundred dollars, $10,000 cents. Then I withdraw $42 and 37 cents. And finally I deposit 10 cents. So I compute the results, a very simple computation, and then I'm printing the dollar balance. And I'm using a helper function here that divides the amount by hundred and shows it with two decimals so that we get the correct dollar units. And then when I run this, then obviously this is our balance that we got after this simple computation. So you also immediately see a disadvantage of working with integers for monetary values, which is that it can be unintuitive that you have to represent things in cents. And if you make a mistake, for example, you forget to multiply by 100 or divide by 100, depending on what you need to do, that could be an expensive mistake. One way to make this a bit easier is not by using integers directly, but by using a class that represents a monetary amount. And here's an example of how you could set that up. So I have a money class, a data class that has an amount in cents. So I am actually using integers in this case. And then I also include a currency symbol because well, that might be useful. And then I have a class method called mint that creates money out of thin air and it gets either a decimal or a floating point value. So you could actually read this from a database, for example, and then it's going to return a, an instance of class money. And why am I using a class method here, not an initializer? Well, in this case, this allows me to create a money object from decimals or floats, but I can still use the 
uh, data classes generates an initializer method to also create it from sense, depending on what I need. And then I've created a couple of helpful Dunder methods to be able to deal with money. For example, here is one where I convert money to a string value and there I'm actually uh, dividing the cents by 100. I print the currency symbol in front of it and then I print the amount with two decimals. I also added some helpful methods like adding and subtraction. You can add more if you'd like. But basically this checks, hey, if you pass a money object, then I'm simply going to add the amounts. And if I do subtraction, then I'm going to subtract the amounts. I'm not really taking care of currency conversions here. You could basically build out this class to add lots of features to it. But for the example, I kept it pretty simple. So now I create 100 US dollars using the mint class method. Uh, then I'm uh, defining a withdrawal amount and a deposit amount. So these are the exact amounts that we also had before. Then I can perform these arithmetic operations, which call these Donder methods. And then I can simply display the results as follows. And of course, if I want to do that with a different currency, like uh, euros, for example, I can also do that. So if I run this, then we get, of course, this result. So this is one way to circumvent some of the issues of dealing with integers, because when we're using money here in this main function, I don't have to worry about that internally. It's going to use integer values. So what do you think? Do you think using integers for monetary values is confusing? Do you prefer to use decimals? Let me know in the comments. One thing you might consider, since I also talked about that briefly in the video, is that you could use NumPy data types to represent monetary amounts instead of any of the built-in types that Python offers. But when you think about it, NumPy is not really that much faster than Python's built-in types. I mean, it's slightly faster, but not that much. And also, NumPy has fixed size types. So we have 64-bit integers, which means that if you are Scrooge McDuck, you're going to run into problems. And here I have an example that shows this. So I updated the money class to use the NumPy 64-bit fixed size integer types instead of the Python int. Uh, I didn't change anything else in the class. So then let me run this. So of course this runs perfectly fine. But of course, if I try to enter a large amount, I actually have to type the amount, then you see we're going to get an overflow error because the integer is too large. And since we are representing the monetary amounts in cents, this happens even sooner than you would expect. Now, instead of integers, you might think, hey, maybe we can use the uh, NumPy floats because NumPy has a 128 and even a 256 bit float type, but those are not supported on all platforms, at least on my Mac. They're not supported. It's a 64-bit system and it simply doesn't work. I don't know about uh, Windows and Linux. That might actually work, but that's something you have to take into account. So unless you have a very specific need where you're sure that you're going to need NumPy types, then I don't think they're really suitable to represent monetary amounts in Python. So conclusion, in any case, don't use floats to represent monetary amounts. Use decimals or use integers. And here's the trade-off. If you want a direct representation with flexible precision and built-in rounding, use the decimal type. However, if you need fast performance, low memory usage, and wide compatibility, and you could deal with conversion issues, use integers instead. I hope this video was useful. Another rabbit hole to dive into is dates and time. If you want to learn more about that, watch this video next. Thanks for watching and take care.